quiet down, let us deep into our hearts as we settle in and come to worship God. Ash Wednesday marks the beginning of the Lenten season for us, a time when we make room to aspire to, a time when we aspire to make room for a deeper introspection and practices that will draw us to the love and the assurance that we find in our faith and in Christ. But sometimes our faith can feel that it is not as sure as we hoped for. We can feel less than at times, perceiving that others may be able to do more or be more faithful in their practices and their beliefs. This Lent, I do invite you all to rather do the best or be the best. Let us seek together to gain momentum one day at a time to reach a faith that is quite never perfect, but that is always good enough. Please join me in the call to worship. God's people have been called together. God's people have been called to repent. God's people have been called to be reconciled to our God. Let us come to bow down before our merciful God. Pray with me. Holy One, merciful God, Make yourself known to us on this night. Be present with us in this often troubled journey of life. Create in us hearts that are open to transformation. And give us the patience of practice in this Lent season, ordering our days with time enough for you. Amen. Let us join our voices in our first hymn, number 450, Be Thou My Vision.
Jesus used the word hypocrite to describe those who put on airs in public to make people believe that they were holy, that their religious practices was, well, perfect. But their hearts were actually not in the practice, but rather in the rewards of public approval and that what it could bring to them, which is here today and often gone tomorrow. Sometimes it is life itself that robs us of our shiny and perfect life that we had planned for ourselves. A diagnosis, a broken heart, a lost opportunity. What places in your life and your faith could begin to lose from the change of perfectionism. Let's all take a moment for silent reflection. My friends, hear this compassionate word from the prophet Isaiah. Is not this the fast that I choose? To lose the bonds of injustice, to undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke? Because then... Your light shall break forth like the dawn, and your healing shall spring up quickly. People of God know that already God is offering us the freedom from the bonds of perfectionism, inviting us to break the yoke of what should be so that we might discover what might be when we honor the small steps that are actually possible in this moment for this day. And know also that despite our sometimes faltering steps, in the name of Jesus Christ, you all have been forgiven, even now. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Our gospel lesson for tonight is a very typical reading for Ash Wednesday. It comes from the gospel according to Matthew, and we're going to read chapter 6, verses 1 through 6, and then 16 to 21. Be especially careful when you are trying to be good so that you don't make a performance out of it. It might be good theater, but the God who made you won't be applauding. When you do something for someone else, don't call attention to yourself. You've seen them in action, I'm sure, play actors, I call them treating prayer meeting and street corner alike as a stage, acting compassionate as long as someone is watching, playing the crowds. They get applause, true, but that's all they get. When you help someone out, don't think about how it looks. Just do it. Quietly and unobtrusively. That is the way your God who conceived you in love Working behind the scenes helps you out. And when you come before God, don't turn that into a theatrical production either. All these people making a, leg a regular show out of their prayers, hoping for 15 minutes of fame. Do you think God sits in the box seat? Here's what I want you to do. 
find a quiet, secluded place so you won't be tempted to role play before God. Just be there as simply and honestly as you can manage. The focus will shift from you to God, and you will begin to sense His grace. When you practice some appetite denying discipline to better concentrate on God, don't make a production out of it either. It might turn you into a small time celebrity, but it won't make you a saint. If you go into training inwardly, act normal outwardly. Shampoo and comb your hair, brush your teeth, wash your face. God doesn't require attention getting devices. He won't overlook what you are doing. He'll reward you well. Don't hoard treasure down here where it gets eaten by moths and corroded by rust or worse, stolen by burglars. Stockpile your treasures in heaven where it's safe from moth and rust and burglars. It's obvious, isn't it? The place where your treasure is, is the place you will most want to be and end up being. The word of God that is still speaking. So tonight begins our journey through Lent, then Holy Week, and then Easter. And like any well-prepared traveler, we confess that we want to pack our bags to make sure we are comfortable for our six-week journey. But Ash Wednesday is about leaving our baggage behind and braving the unknown, carrying nothing but the mark of God's beloved. And in this this very vulnerable place, we confess that we want to be surrounded by all the things that makes us feel better about ourselves, including things that we think God needs in order to love us. And yet, and yet God whispers to us that we are made in his divine image, and that faithfulness is that knowledge is all we need for the journey of life. So let us ponder what it is that we may let go of this Lent in order to help us more clearly hear the stories of Jesus' extravagant love for all of us and to follow him more bravely and confidently. So today, as we start, you will hear the words that remind us of our humanity when you come up here that says, you are dust, and to dust you shall return, reminding us that we are but mortal. But it also echoes that creation story where God lovingly made us human beings from the dust of the earth. The dust of all of creation, which, which exploded from the stars and were scattered far and wide. Stardust, which was part of the earth and were used to shape and form us. It's a strange anointing, this cross that comes to mark us at the beginning of Lent, isn't it? Ashes, dust, dirt, the stuff that we actually walk upon and we would like to sweep out of our house or get rid of from our bodies. The stuff that now comes to remind us that of who we are, where we really are from, and where we are bound. Mere dust indeed. But for a minute, close your eyes 
And imagine what happens when dust gets swept up by the wind in a room that is filled with sunlight and how it starts to glitter and glow. We are dust in that very same way, my friends. When we are swept up by the wind of the Spirit of God, we are illumined by God's grace, and we glitter and sparkle in the light that illuminates us through the Divine One. So yes, we are dust, unassuming maybe, and plain. But penetrated by God's light, we are transformed into something that is beautiful and radiating. And it is caught by the sunlight. How terrible. And yet, how marvelous. All in the same breath, this dust that was used to create us. Can you imagine how tender God must have felt when he used the dust of stars to put us together, breathing through us all the while? And even after releasing us from the blessed dust at last, God continues to breathe, to breathe us toward whatever it is that we are continuously becoming. A writer, James Bryan Smith, says it so beautifully. God speaks over us with the truth of who we are becoming. God sees the finished product and watches us as we become the ones God made us to be. God's not surprised or worried or sad or disappointed when we screw up. God just smiles and says, come on, we've got this. So let us not be bound on this journey by the things that would make us perfect. But let us find those practices that speak to the places that are deep in our hearts. That unbind us from being perfect, and instead help us to find what we've already been made in God. Let us seek out the things, whether it is fasting or praying or meditating or giving up judgment and pride and being perfect so that God can have his way and illumine us with his tender love and grace. Because in the end, come Easter, all we really want is to find ourselves closer in our relationship with Jesus than what we are now. So find the thing that works for you and take yourself off the hook of perfection. Perfect lives or perfect bodies, or perfect marriages, or perfect children, or perfect friendships. And spend your time this Lent simply realizing that being the one in whom Christ dwell already is really, really good enough. Good enough with all your flaws with all your fin finiteness, with all your dependency on God, and totally and utterly loved. Good enough that if we want to change who we are, let it be to be more of the stardust that shines and glitters when God's grace penetrates through us. Begin these days, my friends, of Lent hungry. Hungry not for the things that will make you perfect, but for the things that will increase your intimacy and your relationship with God. 
and let the ashes that mark your brow tonight tell the world who you really are and who you serve. And as a reminder that we are all works in progress. That as we move through these 40 days, we are being transformed as God's renovation project. Fixer uppers filled with the dust of who we are and who we will become. Let us have faith in the cross that saves us and give ourselves over to God's grace and mercy and love that God has already offered us. Beloved dust with whom God can do great things it's just plain dirt filled with the very breath and spirit of God. May it be so. Number With the ritual of ashes, we are reminded that we are part of the dust and the debris of the earth. And just as the things of creation grow, but also die in the cycle of life, so too our lives have a time to grow in times of decay and death. And as we put the mark of the cross with ashes on our foreheads, this is a reminder of, our, of God's presence with us, the grace of Christ and the spirit and the power of the spirit in all. I want to share a blessing with you. It's called A Blessing for the Dust for Ash Wednesday by Jan Richardson. And then I will invite all of you to come on forward if you want to receive the ashes and we'll do that while singing, um, Jesus, Remember Me. All those days you felt like dust, like dirt, as if all you had to do was turn your face toward the wind and be scattered to the four corners or swept away by the smallest breath as insubstantial. Did you know what the Holy One can do with dust? This is the day we freely say we are scorched. This is the hour we are marked by what is made it through the burning. This is the moment we ask for the blessing that lives within the ancient, that lives within the ancient ashes, that makes its home inside the soil of the sacred earth. So let's be marked not for sorrow. And let us be marked not for shame. Let us be marked not for false humility or for thinking we are less than we are. But for claiming what God can do with dust. Within the dirt, within the stuff of which the world is made and stars that blaze in our bones and the galaxies that spiral inside the smudge that we wear. As you are led, come forward and receive the ashes.
Please pray with me. God, our creator, you formed us from the dust of the earth and you brought us to new life in Christ. We ask you to change our hearts as we journey through these 40 days of Lent. Help us to be the kind of people who turn to you regularly, resting in the comfort of your unchanging presence. Meet us in a gentle way that allows a self-forgiveness when we forget, and the courage to start again. God, who already knows us, who knows the things we do that dampen your life in us, Grant us the freedom to come out from under what is not ours to carry, but sit for a while in your presence and begin to sense how you are shaping for us a pattern of life that builds strength and peace. Help us clear out the clutter of ugly thoughts and useless things so that we can store up what is beautiful and useful and of lasting value. And throughout this land, as we explore what practices are ours to do, show us what we truly love, so that we might love and do what is truly good. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Blessing before a fast, as you go into Lent, hear these words from Kate Bowler's book. Blessed are you, ready to open yourself to new joy, 
a doorway that until now has been hidden. In this culture of acquisition and gain, blessed are you for desiring fresh ears to hear what might be a bit too loud. But take the next step to turn it down a notch and make more space for God. But discipline yourself with time and tension and hope, anticipating God to show up in your discomfort. Trusting that when you need God, God promises to be there. As you go and leave tonight and start these 40 days in a search to grow closer to God and to let go of the things that would make you more perfect. May that God who loves the stardust, who loves all of creation, and especially all our imperfect buds, and Jesus who is our companion along this crooked path of life, and the Holy Spirit who loves to improvise in surprising new ways, go with you on this journey dwell with you and give you all joy and peace until we meet again. Amen. Mm -hmm.